any typical guy that's in, you know, into Chicano lifestyle, you know, dark, you know, listen to rock too. I'm all over the place. Um, but mainly me, just typical guy, everyday guy, you know what I mean? Um, grew up in Vegas since I was 15, moved here from Albuquerque, but been here since I was 15, grew up in basically in the Chicano lifestyle ever since New Mexico and it's just stuck with me you know it's just something that I love and it's my passion you know um, the lowrider life you know the basically just in depth the Mexican lifestyle it's always been in my blood and yeah. um, my roots are basically you know Mexican so I admire every culture that there is the main the main uh, artist I looked up growing into the photography lifestyle was Esteban Orio. He's one of the my first in two guys because he shoots that, that out in LA. Mm -hmm. He shoots the Chicano lifestyle, something that here in Vegas we kind of have and don't have because you see it, but it's very small community, but it's not there. Mm. In LA is everywhere any boy you go to he shoots behind the scenes of the chicano lifestyle the, you know the tattoos the the rugged uh the low riders the mm -hmm. pit bulls the the women you know the beautiful you know mestizas aztec yeah. girls or any kind of girl that he shoots you know but he was one of my persons that i follow into photography and creating my own style from there like he shoots documentary but i shoot like you say, more contrasting, more into depth. Your style of photography, can you tell us more about it? Well, you know, shooting. shooting, shooting um, everybody thinks I use big time, you know, like big time equipment or studio. I shoot at home, you know. Yes, I had my, my studio at one point, you know. Uh, but it's an overhead that I didn't, didn't need to pay. You know, but which it was okay, but my equipment's not hard. It's an alien B with a beauty dish. You know, there's days that I could use more than one light, but my one goal lights, one key light, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, my camera, my my settings, you know, they fluctuate. I don't never have a preferred setting. Uh, it depends on the model or you know whatever. Sometimes I'll bring in, you know, the backlight or the side light. As far as uh, um, the young kids, the young uh, photographers, do you recommend them practicing with a strobe, one strobe, two strobes? Um, on the strobes, I recommend them to use strobes. Uh, you know, flash photography, I recommend it. Um, off camera, better. You know, yes, the direct look has beautiful look, but if you work with angles on your flash, it's way better you know the overhead the side or whatever play with your lighting uh, any photographer or artist or whatever they'll tell you this lighting is the key light no matter what you do your lighting is number one camera secondary for me if my lighting is there I can shoot it if I don't have lighting no I cannot shoot it I, had, I need my lighting to be exactly to what I'm going for. It's it's just part of me, you know. I I need my lighting. If you do too much work in post production, you're not doing it right. Yeah. I direct them, but um, I study what I'm shooting. I study it at first, you know. I study. It depends what look we're going for. Um, uh, posing, I always tell them to do shapes. I want, I like shapes in their hands. Um, you know, triangles, squares, um, pointing fingers. It's just me studying at first what it is and then what the image is. If I want it really serious, um, they speak to me. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I like your soul to speak to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I really want you to show me who you really are. You know, I don't want, yes, beautiful, sexy, 
but I want to see the beautiful sexy in your soul that's why I really want to see your body is yes could be beautiful or, or any type of body but I want to see the real you when you're posing that I want to see the real in the real feeling that you have for that pose this is not just your typical tattoo photography because this is portraits solely portraits yeah it's just portraits and portraits with tattoos you know tattoos have been in society for um, over a millennia right and almost in every race in anything but tattoos nowadays they're signified more than you know if you how high you're in a tribe or or where you sit in a certain society or whatever. There's they're telling your story in a way in the past or in the future that you might think, you know? That's just the uh, the body, you know, the bodies with the tattoos complement a lot because their tattoos are part of their life. You know, even though that I have tattoos myself, it's it's part of your life, something that you chose forever. So when you implement your tattoo into an image, I want your tattoo to tell me a story as well because there is a story on your tattoo. So certain certain concepts I have, it's implemented with their tattoos. It, it it has to go with their tattoos too. If if you have traditional tattoos, I like to do something traditional like pin up be, you know, sexy. If you have something more Chicano, more, you know, out there, I like to implement that a little bit into you why you even have those tattoos too, you know? Implement who you are and who you become. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why you got into that certain point of your life. Most of the props, you know, I make them. Yeah. Some of them I made, some of them I bought. Yeah, sometimes you, like the wings, when I use the wings, yeah. I, I bought some of those, but we need them, you know? I need them because I like, I like one going for that shoe. When I do my, you know, my Indian head, I made that one. You know, it, it took me almost two months or three months, something like that, to make it. Um, anything else, like the bad, some of them, they're they're given to me from companies that I use them for whatever. Um, the makeup artist, which I use, you know, I use Wendy. Mm -hmm. She's one of the best make makeup artists I have. Tara, Tara's one of them, and there's also my boy Jamie from LA. Mm -hmm. I use those three for a reason because each one of them are different. Gotcha. But they know what I'm going for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, those are my makeup arts for that prop. You know what I mean? Because I can share makeup, a prop. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm working on an Aztec head. I'm doing an Aztec piece wow. that I'm trying to make. I have the feathers, I have everything. I just need to make it. I need to find the time to make it. Once I have that, I'll be excited to right now. I want to do an Aztec, an Aztec, uh, an Aztec photo shoot, you know? Gotcha. That's my man. Another, another step that I want to go to now, you know? Yeah, this next song is called TMI. <laughs> develop this uh, this style but upon developing this style what was your first camera or how did you pick up photography um the reason I picked up photography and not a lot of people know this but you know obviously everybody wants to know and wonders uh, I'll say it to everybody now I uh, went through one of the hardest uh, breakups in my life so what I did I was like I need something to distract my mind with you know besides you know I already did something with photography when I was younger but I just needed something to distract my mind with. So what I did, I picked up a camera, distracted myself more. Um, and then my first camera had to be the 5D Mark I, you know. And the reason I picked that camera is because it's a full frame, you know, and it shoots darker. And it shoots what I needed to shoot it, what I had in my mind in that time. That's what brought me into photography, you know going through a bad breakup, distracting myself, sure. you know, I just needed something to motivate myself more mentally and obviously physically in a way, but just move out there. What, uh, what was your lens of choice and also what type of photography did you um, My lens of choice back then was, it had to be the, the 50 mil at first, mm -hmm. like nifty 50, you know, everybody wants to get that lens at yeah. first, but my biggest choice has always been the 17 to 40. 
if I had to guess, street photography, or did you do more landscapes? Um, I did a little bit of both. I looked at angles that nobody was looking. I could say that nobody was looking in Vegas, you know. Everybody focuses on the buildings and a lot of... I was focusing on, like, people leaving the club, being drunk, like, the after hours of life, right. you know. A lot of people focus on the beautiful and the stuff. I focus on what's not beautiful, making it into a beautiful piece of art. When I was in Albuquerque, I was shooting. I was shooting film. I was shooting with a 35 film, uh, Canon 35, just straight up Canon, shooting the friends, shooting the homies, you know, having fun, just doing stupid stuff as kids would, you know? Some black and white, some colored. A lot of black uh, and white. I'm a lot of black and white. A lot of black and white is my go-to. Main thing is because of uh, my eyes. Yeah. I would have to wear glasses, but when I do photography, I take out my glasses. It's easier for me So the glass. The glass affects me with the, the lens. It, fo it messes up with my focusing. Okay. So that's why I take it off. I could say I kind of shoot blindly, you know? But it's more of me just looking where I know where the face is at and just going from there. That's where my, my angle is. My angle is the face. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about anything else but your face. Your face has to be on point. So that's what I focus on. Um, and I tell people that and they're like, they get surprised. But my black and white is better for my eyes. Luckily for me, that when I shoot it raw, it converts into color. If you shoot JPEG, it doesn't. It just stays black and white. Yeah. The raw, that's the beauty of raw. Raw converts it back to a color, even though that's not a true color. But you could have much fun with it. Doing more projects in LA, everywhere, um, maybe? Yes, I have a few trips planned. I have one planned for Australia to Texas, back to LA, oh, California area, San Diego, LA, San Francisco, and then maybe New York by next fall. I have my Instagram number, you know, I have the number on Instagram, that's where you're if you ever want to contact me, my number's there. Um, no web page. I mean, anything that they want to talk to me, like I said, they could text me. It might take me some time to text back, you know. I have, you know, I have two jobs besides photography and videography. Uh, it takes me sometimes, even, I tell people, even my edits might take me some time. It's easier if you text me. It might take me a day to text you back, but at least I know I have the notification there. It's easier than my Instagram. For the audience, um, any tips for the newcomers? Any um, motivational? Um, well, the main tip I could give them is just keep growing. Every, everybody wants to do a mark in you know in in an image or something, but your real mark will be teaching somebody something, and hopefully they pick it and they surpass you. And they teach that part, your part and their part to another generation. Yeah. Another thing, stay humble. Don't think that you're out there. We're just guys with a camera. That's all we are. We're guys with a camera. There are certain things that, yes, we'll hide. Mm -hmm. But your basics of how you started, teach it. And then they will go from there. I don't, I'm not afraid. If they want to sit down with me and talk about it, I'm more than welcome to teach them as much as I can. But what I taught you, take it to you, and teach, teach it to the younger generation. Always teach each other. How you doing? Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Click here if you guys want to see more videos just like this one and for the latest. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. I'll see you guys on the next video, okay? See you.